Most people know the difference between owning a home and renting a home, but there's a third category that not many people are familiar with. And this is what we call a leasehold property. But what exactly is it? And is it something that you should or shouldn't consider buying? I'm gonna cover all that and more, so stay tuned. What's going on guys? Alex Dunbar from the Dunbar Real Estate Group and Remax Treeline Realty based out of the Cloverdale Langley area. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about leasehold property. First of all, I'm gonna define what a leasehold is. I'm gonna compare freehold versus leasehold, the different types of leaseholds, things to consider with financing and leasehold, and the pros and cons. So if you've ever been on a real estate search engine and come across a property that seemed way too good to be true, there's a good chance it might've been a leasehold property. A good example of this is the Sun Creek Estates complex in Surrey. I probably get asked about properties in this complex at least once a week because people see these condo slash townhome style properties that are in the 300,000s when everything else is comparable is selling for significantly more. And I hate to break it to you, but if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. But don't get me started on Sun Creek Estates. We'll save that for a later video. So first of all, let's define what a leasehold property is. Essentially, it means that the owner owns the building but not the land that it sits on. The land is leased to the homeowner by the landowner. Leasehold land is basically a plot of land that's been rented out to a developer who then builds on the land and leases it out for a certain amount of money. The leases on these land are typically for extended periods of time, think 100 years or more. Most commonly what I see is a 99 year lease. These can often belong to the city, corporation, First Nations reserve lands or university. So what's the difference between leasehold and freehold? As I already mentioned with leasehold, you don't own the actual land. So essentially you don't have title to that land. Whereas with freehold, you own both the land and the building. Now, why is this so important? Well, in general, the land holds most of the value. So typically freehold properties are gonna appreciate by more than leasehold. Now this isn't always the case, but in most cases it does hold true. So what are the different types of leaseholds? The main types we need to consider are prepaid versus non-prepaid and strata versus non-strata. With a prepaid leasehold, Typically these units are more expensive than the non-prepaid. The reason being is that the individual who sold you that leasehold unit has already paid the remainder of the lease amount. Non-prepaid lease payments means that the homeowner has a monthly lease payment on top of other expenses such as strata fees, maintenance, and taxes to name a few. And depending on what the lease agreement says, the landowner can increase lease payments at different intervals for different amounts. Non-prepaid leases are also often found on First Nations land, but not always. For example, there are some near Granville Island. Typically, the value of a prepaid leasehold unit declines as it gets closer to the end of its term. What happens at the end of a lease can be quite uncertain, so the closer it gets to the end of the term, the more it decreases in value. Moving on, let's look at the difference between strata and non-strata. So strata leaseholds still follow the BC Strata Property Act, and this stipulates how a building can be managed. It also gives the owners the right to vote for new bylaws, maintenance, and budgeting. In non-strata leasehold buildings, the corporation makes all the decisions on your behalf. So in this case, you don't have a say in the rules, budgets, or what maintenance costs are spent on. Essentially, you're required to follow whatever they say. So where are some common places you can find leaseholds in the Lower Mainland? To name a couple, you've got the land south of False Creek near Granville Island, in southeast Vancouver along the Fraser River, in parts of Tawasin, Chilliwack, and also in specific areas in Surrey. So how long can you own a leasehold property? When you purchase a leasehold property, you're essentially purchasing the right to possess that property until the end of the lease or until you sell it, whichever comes first. If the lease expires while you're still living in the home, you're then going to have to renegotiate the terms of the land that you're living on. And this can often come at a considerable expense. And that's why it's so important to find out all these details before you make a purchase of a leasehold property. Some of the most important things that you're going to want to look out for are the details of the lease and what happens at the end of the lease. For instance, if you own a non-prepaid leasehold property, the lease agreement will tell you whether the owner can raise your lease payments and at what time intervals. Moving on, let's look at the financing aspect of a leasehold property. So can you get a mortgage on a leasehold property? And unfortunately, there's no easy answer to this question. Generally speaking, leasehold properties are more difficult to get financing for. For starters, most lenders won't approve a term or amortization that is longer than the actual lease itself. So depending on the date of the expiration of the lease, this can make things challenging. So typically, most lenders will only be willing to give an amortization that is five years less than 
than the lease. For instance, if there's only 25 years left on the lease, they'll only give you an amortization for 20 years. This can make it more difficult as obviously this means you'll have to pay it off sooner as well as the fact that your monthly payments will be higher. So it's extremely important to keep the expiration date in mind. Anytime you're not dealing with a freehold strata, it's gonna be more challenging to get financing for. Your options are typically reduced for First Nations reserve leasehold and private leaseholds are the most challenging. In many cases, the only option may be a private lender and sometimes not even that is a guarantee. This means that if you actually are able to get financing, it's more than likely you may have to get qualified at a higher interest rate. In many cases, from my own experience, I've seen that they require at least a minimum of a 20% down payment and don't offer high ratio mortgages. Moving on, let's look at the pros and cons. So the first and probably the biggest pro is the fact that you can buy a property in a location that you otherwise probably couldn't because you can get it at a discount. For instance, looking at a freehold versus a leasehold property in the False Creek area, there's going to be a significant difference in price. Pro number two, you're supporting your own future and not paying off someone else's mortgage. So even though the appreciation on your home typically isn't going to be as much as on a freehold, you're still able to build some equity and this can help you with a future purchase down the line. Reason number three, a leasehold can often be an alternative to paying the same amount of rent but actually being able to own something. Even though you don't technically own the land, you do own the structure. And pro number four, if you're an investor, the purchase cost is low but you can still generate quite high returns on your investment. Typically you're able to get better properties in better locations at cheaper rates but you can still charge the same amount of rent. This means your monthly cash flow can still be good even if your appreciation is not. And now to the other side of the coin, the cons of leaseholds. Con number one, there's no guarantee that the landlord will renew the lease. So because of this, you have to be very wary of how much time is left on that lease. And in my personal opinion, I recommend you don't buy anything without at least 30 to 50 years left. Con number two, the landlord has the ability to increase rent at the end of the term unless otherwise stated in the lease. And yet again, this is why it's so important to find out whether it's prepaid or not prepaid. Con number three, the landlord has the ability to sell the land at any point in time during the lease unless specifically outlined in the contract. This means that at any point in time during your lease, you could be forced to sell if the landlord decides to sell or redevelop the land. Con number four, there's far fewer lenders who are willing to finance leasehold land, especially privately owned leasehold land. This means the rates in terms of your mortgage are likely less favorable. And con number five, leasehold property does not typically appreciate the same value as freehold. Additionally, its value may even drop as it gets closer to the expiry date. So this is one of the key things you need to consider before purchasing a leasehold property. And that's about gonna do it for today's video, but to end it off, let's summarize some of the key points. Before making a decision, you have to understand the differences between a leasehold and a freehold property. You need to determine what type of lease it is, whether it's prepaid or non-prepaid. You also have to determine if it's strata or non-strata. You need to find out what the length of the lease is and when it expires. And you have to make sure that you read the fine print so you know what you're getting yourself into. It's extremely important to seek guidance from someone with experience with these types of properties, as well as legal advice. And at the end of the day, I don't personally believe that leasehold properties are right for most people. However, it all comes down to your unique situation. And whether you're looking to purchase a leasehold or a freehold property, I'd be more than happy to discuss your options with you. You can scroll down, hit the first link in the description and book a call with me at your earliest convenience. And if you enjoyed today's video, I'll ask that you do one thing for me and that's to hit that like button so the algorithm will push this video out to more individuals just like yourself who wanna learn more about real estate in BC. And if you're interested in seeing more videos just like this one, I suggest you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you're notified whenever I put out a new video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Everybody, 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 everybody.